this video, I'll show you how to securely connect the Bitbucket repository to your AWS account using OIDC or OpenID Connect. You might be wondering why OIDC is our choice for authentication in this tutorial. Well, technology keeps evolving and best practices change over time. In my experience, I've tried various authentication methods and as of the date of this recording, OIDC stands out as a superior option. Think of OIDC as a virtual passport for web services. When you establish a connection between Bitbucket and AWS, OIDC serves as a secure bridge, verifying your identity to AWS. It's like presenting your passport at the border. AWS checks this passport, which is actually a secure digital token provided by OIDC. This token is more secure than traditional credentials and acts as a temporary digital ID, confirming that Bitbucket has the necessary permissions to access specific AWS resources on your behalf. What makes OIDC shine in this context is its security and efficiency. These tokens have a short lifespan, reducing the risk of security breaches compared to long-term credentials. It's like having a temporary and highly secure access code that changes with each session. OIDC is a standardized protocol, ensuring seamless integration with various platforms. This standardization means that when we connect Bitbucket to AWS using OIDC, we not only streamline our workflow, but we also enhance our security. All right, I went ahead and logged into my AWS Scripster account. And the first thing I want to do is go to IAM here. If you don't see IAM and you're recently visited, you can type it up here in the search IAM and go to IAM. On the left hand side, I'm going to choose identity providers. For this, I'm going to choose add provider. And for the type of provider, we want to use open ID connect. For provider URL and audience, we need to get that from Bitbucket. I went ahead and created a sample repository that has absolutely nothing in it. So on the left hand side, we should have this option for repository settings. Go ahead and click that and then scroll down towards the bottom and you'll see Open ID Connect. If you choose that, you'll see you have an identity provider URL as well as the audience. Let's go ahead and copy the provider URL and paste that into our AWS provider URL. Go ahead and click Get Thumbprint. I'm going to skip the step of verifying the thumbprint, but if you want to follow these instructions, you can do that as well. For audience, I'm going to copy the audience down here, and I'm going to paste it down here into audience. And then I can click Add Provider. Now that I've created an identity provider, I can assign it to a role. I can view the provider. We haven't created our role yet, so let's go ahead and click on Roles. Let's create a new role. For this, I'm going to choose Web Identity. And for web identity, I'll choose the identity provider that I created. For the audience, I'll choose the audience that I added, and then I'll click next. As of right now, I haven't created any permissions for this specific role, and we'll do that in a minute. So I'm just gonna scroll down and click next. And for the role name, I'm gonna call it Bitbucket. And I'll click create role. Now I can view the role that I created, and you can see I have zero permission policies, meaning I haven't given this role any permission. What I have done is I've created a role. I have a role ARN, and I'm gonna use this ARN in Bitbucket later on in the video. But before I can use it, I have to give this role permission inside of AWS. My ultimate goal is to zip up my repository in Bitbucket and drop it into an S3 bucket. Let's go over to S3 and create the bucket that we wanna drop our zip file into. I'm gonna to go to S3 and I'm gonna click Create Bucket. Take note of the region you're creating your bucket in. For right now, I'm gonna leave mine as US East 1. I should point out that when creating an S3 bucket, the name has to be unique within the region that you're creating it. And what I mean by that is US East 1 is the region. Most likely, somebody already has a bucket named Bitbucket. If I click Create, it's gonna most likely tell me that this bucket name is already taken. Let's go ahead and try that. I'm also gonna turn on versioning and I'll leave everything else as the default. So as you can see, I clicked Create, and it's telling me that Bitbucket, the name is already taken. You have to pick a unique name within the region that you're creating your S3 bucket. For this, I'm gonna use Scripster Bitbucket for my S3 name, and hopefully that name is available. Scroll down to the bottom and click Create Bucket. At this point, I've created my Scripster Bitbucket S3 bucket. 
and there's nothing in it. Now that I've created an S3 bucket, I have to create a policy within AWS Identity and Access Management, or IAM, to give my Bitbucket role that we created earlier permission to send Bitbucket files to this S3 bucket within AWS. Let's go back to IAM. Now that I'm back in IAM, I want to create a policy. We'll choose Create Policy. Now we have the option to use the built-in UI editor to create the policy, but I'm going to choose JSON over here. And in here, I'm going to manually create my policy using JSON. So I wrote this ahead of time. So let's review this JSON. You'll see for effect, I have allow. And then for action, I've given the put object, get object, delete object, and list bucket. For resource, I've given it the scriptster dash bit bucket slash asterisk, which means it can see everything in every directory inside of this bucket, as well as the bucket itself, which is the next line. Once we create this policy, we can apply this to the role we created previously, which should allow our Bitbucket account to communicate with this S3 bucket. I'm gonna scroll down and click next. For policy name, I'm gonna call this Scriptster Bitbucket Policy. Feel free to name this anything you want. If you'd like, you can also provide a description, but as you can see, it's optional. I'm gonna scroll down and click Create Policy. At this point, my policy is created and I can add it to the role that we created previously. I'll click on Roles and I'm gonna search for Bitbucket because that's the name of the role that we created. Go ahead and select the role and we're gonna choose Add Permission and Attach Policies. We should be able to search for the policy that we just created. My policy is named Scriptster Bitbucket Policy. I'm going to check that off and click Add Permissions. As you can see, policy was attached to role. My role is called Bitbucket. And if I scroll down to Permissions, I can see that Scriptster Bitbucket Policy is attached to this role. At this point in time, everything that needs to be done in AWS should be complete and our Bitbucket role should have permission to do everything that it needs to do. The only thing we're going to need here is the ARN for the role that we've created. We have to supply this in Bitbucket when using our OIDC connection. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back over to Bitbucket. Inside of Bitbucket, there's two places you can create variables. One of them is at the top level repository variables. But as you can see, you have to enable pipelines. We need pipelines for this, so let's go ahead and click Go to Settings to enable these pipelines and choose Enable Pipelines. Now that we've enabled pipelines, we have the ability to create a bitbucket-pipelines.yaml file. We're going to do that in a minute, but first let's go ahead and add our variables. Scroll back down, and this time if we choose Repository Variables, now we should have the ability to create new variables. This is a repository level variable, which is a little bit different than a deployment variable. A repository level variable can be used in any deployment, sort of like a global variable for the entire sample AWS repository. For this, I'm going to call it AWS underscore ARN. And I'm going to paste in, let me uncheck this just so you can see, I'm going to paste in that entire ARN that we copied from AWS a minute ago. For security practices, it's best not to expand expose any information that you don't have to. Exposing your ARN could give information about your AWS account that you might not want people to know. For instance, this is my AWS ID for my Scriptster account. I might not want that information out there, as well as that the existence of a role called Bitbucket. If you're sharing this Bitbucket repository with multiple people that you'd rather not know this information, I typically use the secured flag here so that it's not visible. What this does is it exposes the AWS underscore ARN and variable during a deployment without actually exposing the contents. Let's go ahead and click add. Now when we create our bitbucket-pipelines YAML file, we'll have access to this AWS ARN to send our information. Now a minute ago I talked about multiple places to store variables within Bitbucket. Repository variables are a global variable for the entire repository, but there's also deployments. And within a deployment, you can have a test deployment, staging, production, and they also give you the option to add additional testing environment deployments. Within each of these, you have the ability to also add additional variables that are specific to this deployment. We'll get into that a little later when we create our Bitbucket pipelines file. For now, I just wanted to show you that there's deployments and then deployment environments, and you also have the ability to create additional environments within all of these. Let's go back to the root of our repository so we can clone it and make modifications. 
To clone the repository, I'm going to come up here and click on clone. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to open up a terminal and I will paste it in. And as you can see, I'm just cloning it to my local bitbucket.org slash scripster directory. And I'll press enter. I should have my local repository. I do. Let me cd into sample. You can see there's nothing in there. Let's open up Visual Studio Code and create our bitbucket pipeline file. All right, here we are in our sample AWS repo. Let's go and create that bitbucket pipelines.yaml file. Okay, we've created our file and I'm going to copy and paste in some YAML that I had prepared ahead of time. Okay, so let's talk about this. First, let me zoom in. So here you can see on line one, I'm defining the image I want to use. And for this, I'm using node 16.17.1. Depending on your project and what you're trying to accomplish, you might choose a different default image. But for me, this has worked fine. There's a lot of documentation on how to set up a Bitbucket pipelines.yaml file. And I've kind of cherry picked the pieces that I use most often. So for me, I use pipelines and for my pipelines, I specifically use custom down here, this very first custom pipeline, I have to give it a name and you'll see this come up later when I log into Bitbucket and show you where this is displayed. After the name, we have to define a step. For this specific step, I'm going to use OIDC set to true. And earlier we talked about deployments and deployment environments. That's where this comes in. So right here, I'm using the deployment of test. And what that tells my pipeline is if there's a deployment of test set up, use any variables for the rest of my script. We'll jump down here in a minute to talk about these variables, but that's why we're specifying a deployment of test. Our script itself is just going to run a few simple commands. The first thing I'm doing is apt get update. The second thing I'm doing is apt get dash q q install zip. Q q isn't necessary. It just makes it extremely quiet so that there's no output. Right after that, I'm using the mkdir to create a directory called build. And what I want to do is I want to zip the contents of my repository into a directory called build. And I'm going to call that zip file sample dash repo dot zip and I'm specifying recursively here to specify that I want to capture everything. This make directory and zipping into that directory isn't 100% necessary. This is something I've adopted over the years. Typically my steps are much longer than this and I have a lot of processes to set up my repository before I land it into AWS S3. So this is just kind of a habit to create this build directory and then zip my repository into this file. The next thing we have are built-in pipes provided to us by Bitbucket. Specifically, I'm using the AWS S3 deploy version 1.1.0. That pipe takes in a few variables. The very first variable is AWS OIDC role ARN. And earlier in the video, you saw that we created this AWS underscore ARN that was created as a global variable within our repository. The very next variable is AWS default region. And then we have to specify an S3 bucket. These two variables I haven't created yet. And we're going to do that in a minute. The very last variable is local path. And I'm specifying that I want to capture everything in the slash build directory, which should only contain this sample dash repo dot zip. Let's create this AWS region and AWS S3 bucket in our Bitbucket deployment variables. If I go back into Google Chrome, I can close out of this. I'm going to go back into repository settings, scroll down to the bottom. And this time I'm going to click on deployments. Previously, we talked about the test environment, staging environment, and production environments, and you know that we can add additional environments. For this video, I'm going to use the default test that's provided. I'm going to expand that out, and now I can create the variables from my Bitbucket pipeline file. Let's take a look again. The first variable we're going to create is AWS region. I'm going to copy that, come back over to Chrome, and I'm going to paste in AWS region. For my value earlier in the video, we created our AWS S3 bucket in US East 1. So for my region, I'm going to use US dash East dash 1. And I don't need to click the secure flag because this isn't really a secure item. So go ahead and click add. And now we can go back and create our AWS S3 bucket variable. So I'll click on name, paste in my name, we can uncheck the secure. And then for value, we're going to use the same AWS bucket name that we created earlier in the video. For me, that was scripster dash bitbucket. And I'm going to click add. At this point, I've added the AWS region and the AWS S3 bucket. 
and I've specifically added them to the test environment. If I go back over to my repository variables, I should still have my AWS underscore ARN that is secured. Let's go back to the root of our repository. Let's commit our changes, our Bitbucket pipelines.yaml file. I'm hitting Command S to save, and then I'll go back into my terminal. Normally, you would want to do this on a separate branch, but for me, I'm just going to keep it on master for now to keep the video simple. Git add all, git commit dash m sample, and then I'm going to git push origin master. At this point in time, I should have my Bitbucket YAML file on the master branch in Bitbucket. Let's take a look. I'm going to refresh, and you can see I have my Bitbucket dash pipelines dot YAML file 22 seconds ago. Now you're probably wondering how do we use this file? If I come over here to branches, my master branch. Over here under actions, I have this ellipsis. If I click it, I have this option now for run pipeline for a branch. Let's select that, and you can see I have a pipeline under custom called sample deployment to AWS. It's the only option I have because it's the only pipeline I've created, so it's selected by default. Now I should say you can have pipelines auto trigger when certain things happen in your Bitbucket repository. For this video, I just wanted to show an example of how to set up a pipeline that we can manually deploy. For the automatic running of pipelines, check out the documentation that Atlassian provides. For now, I'm gonna leave the custom sample deployment to AWS and I'll click run. This is new and doesn't typically show up, but our pipeline should start running any minute. There we go. So if I scroll down, my pipeline's running, and you can see by default, Bitbucket auto injects a bunch of variables that we could use in our Bitbucket pipelines.yaml. So we have access to the branch, the build number, clone directory, commit, deployment environment, etc. If I come down here, you can see our repository variables. We have AWS underscore ARN, and we have our deployment variables, AWS region and AWS S3 bucket. So you can see these variables are being pulled in from two different places and injected into our environment. We can see that our image is used, came from docker.io, and we can follow along our build steps. So the first thing I did was app get update, and you can see all the output for that. And then I did apt get dash qq install zip, and you can see all the output for that. I did mkdir for the build directory, and then I zipped all the contents of my repository into that directory. The next thing I did was I used a built-in pipe to deploy my code to AWS S3. At this point in time, you can see my build was successful, and I should be able to come over to AWS, navigate to S3, Find the bucket that I created before, Scripster Bucket. I'll click on it to open, and you can see I have my sample-repo.zip file right here. Now, some of you may be wondering, why did I do it like this? I've created deployment pipelines for hundreds of projects, and this has become my standard method for current projects. The main reason is consistency. Sure, I could have built a JavaScript front end and landed the dist directory into an S3 bucket without zipping anything. I've done it in the past and it might be the best solution for your workflow. Typically, I'm deploying multiple front ends and multiple back ends. The code going out might end up in a container registry, an S3 bucket, CloudFront, EC2 servers. You get the idea. By coming up with a standard approach of zip it and land it into S3, felt strongly consistent and a clean separation of concerns. I tend to leverage tools like code build, code pipeline, and code deploy, and having a single file with the source code really made my starting point in AWS clean and simple. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one.